Last week I was invited to a 24 hour of Le Mans watch party and all I got was this stinking thing right here. Let's take a look at the event and how I was able to win this Xbox One S. Don't worry, box is empty. Welcome to the Sim Racing Paddock. I'm William Marsh and last Wednesday I received an email inviting me to a Le Mans watch party at the Peterson Auto Museum in Los Angeles, California. Now this was my first time going to the museum, but I had always heard a lot of good things about it and also it was recently redesigned in 2015, so I was excited to check out what was added to it and also just to interact with fellow sim racers and racing fans. This event was put together by Microsoft, Michelin, and Ford, and it had a variety of nice prizes, and as you saw before, I actually got to get my hands on one of them. The party took place at the second floor in the Peterson Auto Museum in the VIP lounge. Inside, they had a 100-inch screen where you were able to watch the race. They also had six stations where you could play Forza Motorsport 7, and the main competition was put together by Michelin and was a time trial event using Forza Motorsport 7. You would drive the Porsche 919 hybrid LMP1 car around Le Mans and try to post the fastest time. The four fastest times would be entered into a final event where the winner would win a brand new set of Michelin tires. The other four finalists, and also the winner, would win a pair of sunglasses as well. The second competition was a skill-based raffle. If you were able to take the Porsche 919 around Le Mans and get a lap time under 3 minutes and 45 seconds, you would be entered into a raffle. The grand prize for that raffle was an Xbox One S. The secondary prize was an annual membership to the Peterson Auto Museum. So before we get started and talk about how I did in competition, let's talk about what I had to compete with. So as mentioned, there were six stations in the VIP lounge dedicated to Forza Motorsport 7 utilizing the Xbox One S system. Despite that, there were only four dedicated simulation stations utilizing a full cockpit and wheel and pedal set. That cockpit was the playseat sensation with the Forza Motorsport Edition. That was paired up with the Logitech G920, which was plugged into the console. So this was how we were driving, and this was actually utilizing the Forza Motorsport demo. So we couldn't make modifications to the car setup, we could only adjust the assists, and only to a limited extent. Outside of the VIP lounge, there was also another simulation station open to the public, which had four dedicated simulation rigs. And I did test there, but they strictly forbade turning off assists. So they didn't allow me to turn off any assists, and I found out I was faster with the other setups. So driving with those simulation setups, that was honestly one of the more disappointing parts of the entire event. With that kind of setup, and especially with this being a relatively high profile event, I would have expected these systems and this cockpit and wheel pedal setup to be in less of a state of disrepair. The Logitech G920s on all four stations were in some state of disrepair. You could wiggle it around and it just wasn't a pleasant experience. The pedals were sometimes unresponsive, so I wish for this event put on by Microsoft, they would have had more stable equipment to drive with. Now, rant aside, let's talk about the competition. So, in my first lap, I was able to post a 3 minute 42 second lap time and that got me my entry into the main raffle. For my first lap in the competition, I ended up driving with just all assists on. I didn't really anticipate they were going to allow us to turn off the assists. I expected that they wanted everyone to have all assists turned on to create a stable playing field. But later on, as I talked with other people who competed in the competition, they were telling me they were turning off assists and didn't really have a problem with the people running the competition. So for future laps, I was able to turn off my assists and I actually posted a lap time of 340. And then with about 10 minutes ago before the cutoff, they told me that I was barely outside of the top four finalists for the tire competition. They said that third and fourth place had both posted times of three minutes and 39 seconds. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna try posting one more lap, see if I can make my way into this finale. But unfortunately, 
it wasn't meant to be. In the middle of my lap, which would have qualified me second in the final, they decided to announce the four winners a few minutes early. So they announced the four finalists, and then they announced that they will not be accepting any more times. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to compete in the final and compete for those tires, but as a consolation, they allowed me to enter a second entry in the raffle for the Xbox. A couple hours later, they had the raffle for the Xbox, and I won! So, at least I was able to come out of this not empty-handed, but it would have been interesting to see how I would have competed in that final for the tires. But all things considered, it was a memorable event, a lot of fun, got to meet some cool new people, and also got to see my brother-in-law Robert driving a sim. That was a lot of fun. But yeah, hopefully now that I have a decent Xbox One S that I can use now, hopefully you can expect some more Xbox-based content from Sim Racing Paddock in the future. What titles would you like to see me cover? Let us know in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like and subscribe buttons and help keep us on track. For the Sim Racing Paddock, I'm William Marsh, and you have a great rest of your day.